6 o'clock here at the, well, it's 6.01 at the Alexandria Educational Center. The first item on our agenda is to approve the agenda. I would recommend approval of the agenda as presented. I've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion from the board? A motion we approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Our next item is our Pledge of Allegiance and our mission statement. Our pledge will be led tonight by Kelly Watson and our mission statement by Grant Drupal. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The mission of the Campbell County Schools District in partnership with students, staff, parents, and community <coughs> is to do whatever it takes to ensure a student's success in college, career, and life. Thank you. Uh, next is our school presentation from Klein Elementary. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to present for Klein Elementary this evening. I'm Carrie Ironsbird, principal. In addition to myself, we have my school counselor, uh, Marsha Berry, who is on the leadership team. We have our site-based council teacher representatives, Tori Boone, Trisha Keyes, Jill McGlone, and Elizabeth Rich. And then we have our parent representatives on site-based council, Lydia Kaler, Katie McPherson, and Aisha Ladmore. Our school mission is in partnership with students, staff, parents, and community. We provide students with an experience that enriches their academic achievement as well as all areas in their life, enabling them to become respectful, successful, lifelong learners. And our motto is everyone learns without exception. You can see here our KSA overall performance rating for the school overall was blue. We have also achieved blue ratings in reading and mathematics science, social studies, and writing, and then a green rating for quality of school climate and safety survey. Some of our academic highlights from last spring's KSA testing include 74% of students scored either proficient or distinguished in reading, 77% of students scored proficient or distinguished in math, and we had an overall <coughs> reading and math score of 94. All areas last year improved. The reading and math went up 1.2, science, social studies, and writing went up 2.6, and our quality of school, climate, and safety went up 2.2. I want to um, also say that Connie Ryle and her staff actually deserve the credit for all of that as she was in the leader leadership position last year. Some of our non-academic highlights in, for this year include 94% of students were represented at fall parent-teacher conferences. We had more than 700 people attend our PTO family breakfast event that took place in early April. And we have had a 35% increase in Facebook posts in an effort to keep our community more informed. With the help of um, Steve Abbott and our cafeteria staff, we implemented a new breakfast model in March and this has allowed us to feed approximately an average of 90 more, 90 more students per day at Klein. In looking at our quality of school climate and safety, 97% of third, fourth, and fifth graders believe that all students are getting what they need to be successful at Klein. 99% of students, of third, fourth, and fifth grade students, believe Klein Elementary is a caring place and that the adults care about their physical safety when they are at school. 
Although we are in the blue, we still have some lofty goals for the next school year. We would like to increase our overall index in science, social studies, and writing, and we would also like to increase our overall indicator, indicator score for quality of school and schools, climate, and safety. We'd like to increase the score in that area as well. So kind of honing in on goal number one for science and social studies, <clears throat> in order to increase our achievement in that area, we of course added an additional fourth and fifth grade teacher, teachers, and I want to thank all of you and our district administration for seeing the need for that and fulfilling that need. That has been extremely helpful. We have the support of our district staff, including our elementary instructional coaches. Teachers have peer support. We have our ongoing professional and resource development, one of those being the CER poster that you see <coughs> there that is clear expectations for students to make sure that they are providing claim evidence and, re and reasoning when they are writing in social studies and science. Our teachers have common plan time, so they have multiple opportunities for collaborative sessions, and we are more focused on engagement strategies. And of course, we are doing um, ongoing walkthroughs throughout the school year. <coughs> for goal two, to increase our index score of 79.4, again, we are working in PLC collab sessions to score, calibrate our scoring, analyze and discuss student writing work samples. <coughs> we have an increased and intentional use of our KDE scoring rubrics and checklists that are aligned with those rubrics. We have the support of district instructional coaches at all grade levels, K through five. We are asking students to do more peer and self-assessment through peer for, through professional development and of course walkthroughs in the area of writing as well. For goal three, for our quality of school climate and safety, we are increasing the visibility of our SRO, Officer Bryant, increasing the visibility of staff in all of our common areas. Teachers are conducting morning meetings and mindfulness in their classrooms. We also have SEL lessons weekly by our school counselor. We are also addressing climate and safety initiatives through the Klein Morning News, and that's daily. We do that every day. We have professional development and implementation of Classroom 180 strategies, so trauma-based teaching. We are increasing the use of our Kagan structures, getting more student feedback, and we initiated a PBIS and wellness committee. So with all that, we have a, a few more things going on that I believe are worthy of celebration. We have lots of opportunities for hands-on learning for the students. We have career club days that um, we have our community partners that are coming into the schools and that of course feeds right into the district's initiative for the profile of a graduate. We have lots of arts, including visual and performing arts and musical opportunities for students. We have our strong PTO with a lot of family participation this year. And another initiative we have is um, providing support and mentorship for our primary and intermediate students. And finally, with the help of you, the board, and our district administration, we are able to recognize our excellent teachers that we have at Klein Elementary. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Those are really outstanding numbers and results from, from an elementary school. And especially seeing the parent engagement. Yes. It would be great to know how that's <coughs> accomplished so we could replicate that at other schools. That's something I think every uh, elementary and probably middle and high school would be envious of to see that kind of involvement from the parents. Yes, we do have a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next are our stars. We have a lot of stars to recognize tonight. Ms. Sauerbeck. 
We do have a long list of our stars tonight, which is wonderful. Um, a lot of our groups or our individuals are here. Some are at play practice or softball games um, and other engagements, but we will read them all so that if they wanna watch back and see their recognition, they, they'll be able to do so. Um, our first one that we have is from Campbell County Middle School. She is not here tonight, but I'm sure you've seen on social media. Um, Kristen Bonfield is a teacher at the middle school. She was the Gold Star Chili and the Ch Children's Theater of Cincinnati um, Gold Star Teacher of the Year. According to the guidelines of the contest, a Gold Star teacher goes above and beyond for their students and treats everyone like family. They have courage and integrity in the work they do, as well as a clear passion that shows their love of their job and students. Kristen Bonfield, the Spanish teacher at our middle school, was one of 929 teachers nominated for the award this year. Gold Star chose 10 finalists, including Miss Bonfield. On March 20th, at a surprise assembly at the middle school, Miss Bonfield was recognized as the Gold Star Teacher of the Year for 2024. Gold Star reported to us that out of the 65,000 total votes cast, Miss Bonfield received 22,193 of those votes. We are proud of our community for coming together to vote for a very deserving and well-loved teacher, and we are extremely proud of Ms. Bonfield. So we'll give her a round of applause. <laughs> All right, our first group is FBLA. If you will walk forward when your group is named, shake hands, and then you'll freeze for a picture, and we will recognize you. Um, Evan Clutter, Kennedy Thompson, Jody Miser, Sarah Ensweiler, Camden T. Meyer, Lewis Alford, Saren Thulin, Madeline Barbian, Ali T. Meyer, Brenna Thomas, Dana Thacker, Casey Thompson, and Libby Ponting, advised by Kim Lumen, Tim Cooper, Jared White, and Jeremy Middleton. Um, our FBLA, which is Future Business Leaders of America, is a career and technical student organization aligned to our business and marketing pathways. These students competed in the regional competition. Evan excelled at the FBLA regional competition, securing first place in agribusiness and second place in the local chapter annual business report. Kennedy also showcased her skills, earning first place in database design and applications and second place in personal finance. Jody Miser and Sarah Ensweiler both achieved first place in entrepreneurship. Camden T. Meyer and Lewis Alford each captured first place in hospitality and event management. Saren had two first place victories, one in human resources management and another in word processing. Madeline and Allie both took first place in introduction to business concepts. Brenna and Danica each earned second place in introduction to event planning and introduction to marketing concepts, respectively. Casey won first place in introduction to parliamentary procedures and Libby Ponting excelled in public speaking, securing a first place finish. Congratulations to all in this talented group of students and thank you for representing Campbell County well. All right, for our next group we have FFA, Tally Downs, Trey Downs, Clayton Newspickle, Alexis Ferguson, and Caitlin Joring, advised by Kelly Armour. Tally Downs earned second place in the FFA Creed at the regional FFA competition and also received the Kentucky FFA Foundation SAE Launch Grant, which will provide her with funds to start her own poultry operation on her farm. Trey Downs achieved second place in goat and sheep public speaking. Clayton also secured second place in nursery public speaking. Alexis was awarded second place in forestry public speaking, and Caitlin was awarded second place in wildlife public speaking. These accomplishments reflect the strong representation and diverse talents of CCHS students at the FFA competitions. Congratulations on your achievements. All right, next we have the Technology Student Association. Born Peterson, Nathan Mills, Ben Weber Horowitz, Brooklyn Overgard McCool, Alex Randall, Ali Rawl, and Oliver Victor, sponsored by Donnie Bupre. TSA, the Technology Student Association, is aligned to our engineering pathways. Born and Nathan both earned first place in coding at the TSA regionals and state competitions for CCHS. 
Ben and Brooklyn each won first place in music production at the TSA state competitions for CCHS. Alex, Ali, and Oliver achieved first place in the state technology quiz bowl. Alex was also elected as a state officer. Impressive work for all of you, congratulations. Our next recognition is for Brenna Tate, um, Voice of America Writing Contest. I believe she's at softball tonight. Um, congratulations to her. She won the VFW Voice of America Writing Contest. The award presented by the VFW names her as an outstanding spokesperson for freedom. We are very proud of her. All right, we are ready for the academic team from Kimmel County High School. The Camel County High School academic team was the regional competition champion. During the regional competition, Riley Sherman placed first in language arts and was an important member of the quick recall team. Anya scored third place in language arts and also contributed to the quick recall team's success. Mara was a regional champion, placed in fifth in language arts and third in arts and humanities. Further, she participated on the quick recall team. Mara also placed fifth at the State Governor's Cup in Arts and Humanities testing. Caleb won first place in math, third in social studies, and participated on the quick recall team. Alex was another regional champion, taking second place in math and serving on the quick recall team. Alexandra excelled as a regional champion in Arts and Humanities and was a quick recall team member. Ali Raw placed second in science and contributed significantly to the quick recall team. Cade, Malvin, and Luke all played key roles as members of the Quick Recall team. Kendall, Dylan, Micah, and Oliver also contributed as regional champions and members of the future problem solving team. Congratulations to all the members of the academic team. All right. We have Natalie Marshall from Campbell County High School. She was not able to make it tonight, but we wanted to recognize her for being awarded second place in the high school vocal category of Matinee Musicale's Nancy F. Walker Scholarship Competition. The auditions for this were educated by highly qualified, distinguished judges, and if you've never heard her sing before, she is incredibly talented. So congratulations to Natalie. All right, we also have Olivia Holbrook, who is not with us tonight. Congratulations to Olivia on an outstanding performance at the 2024 Indoor Class State Track Meet held in Louisville, Kentucky. Olivia placed fifth in the 1500 meter run, and she placed first, becoming the state champion in the 800 meter run with a time of two minutes and 15 seconds. So way to go, Olivia. <laughs> We also have um, two cheerleaders who are not here with us tonight, Ava Heisler and Rocio Pirano. Um, congratulations to both of them for being named 2024 10th Region All Region Cheerleaders. They were recognized and received their certificate at the 10th Region Boys Basketball Tournament at the Mason County Fieldhouse. <laughs> All right, the girls basketball team. On the girls basketball team this year, we had Alicia Apple, Kendall Augsback, Madeline Barbian, Stella Brockman, Allison Collins, Addie Davis, Kylie Elam, Josie Feeback, Samantha Hall, Izzy J. Saraya, Amory Mullins, Macy Peoples, Brenna Schultz, Alyssa Weinel, and Faith Whitford, coached by Davey Johnson, Tracy Collins, Eric Clark, George Stahl, and Chandler Dudley. Congratulations to our Lady Camels 2024 varsity basketball team for winning the 37th District Girls Basketball Championship, defeating Scott on February 29th by a score of 47 to 37. Congra <laughs> I have a little more, but that's incredible. Good job. Congratulations to Lady Camels basketball player Izzy J. Saraya for being selected to the 10th Region Basketball Coaches All Region First Team and being selected to the all-conference team for her outstanding performance during the season. Congratulations to coach Davey Johnson for being voted 
the 2024 NKGBCA D1 Coach of the Year. Coach Johnson guided the Lady Camels to a 20-win season, 10 more than last year, and a 37th District Girls Basketball Tournament Championship. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, the boys basketball team. We have Lucas Anthrop, Jaden Augsback, Gage Ballard, Jackson Bittner, Chance Crowley, Austin Daniel, Aiden Dowds, Xavier Fancher, Brian Finney, Zach Franzen, Garen Jackson, Cole Johnson, Nate Smith, Brock Sorgenfry, Connor Weinel, Braden Norwell, and Elliot Eaton, coached by Brent Souter, Brett White, Jared White, Joel Day, Noah Worth, and Dave Orth. Congratulations to the Camels 2024 varsity basketball team for winning the 37th District Boys Basketball Championship defeating Scott on February 28th by a score of 76 to 65. Congratulations to the Camels 2024 varsity basketball team for winning the 10th Region Boys Basketball Championship, defeating Harrison County by a score of 64 to 63 and punching our ticket to Rep Arena. The Camels 2024 varsity basketball team made it to the Elite Eight of the KHSAA Boys Basketball Sweet 16 State Championship Tournament. The Camels defeated Newport in the Sweet 16, 43 to 40. Congratulations to Brock Sorgenfry for being selected to the Sweet 16 All-Tournament team based on his play versus Newport and Harlan County. Additionally, congratulations to the 2024 Camels basketball postseason accolades as voted on by the coaches of the 10th region and the coaches of the Northern Kentucky Athletic Conference. Nate Smith, D1 Mr. Hustle, Cole Johnson, D1 Academic Award winner. Brock Sorgan Fry, All Conference Team. Garen Jackson, All Conference Team and All 10th Region Third Team. Connor Weil, Weinel, All Conference Team and All 10th Region First Team. Congratulations to the team and all your coaches. Um, another group from Campbell County High School um, that was not able to make it tonight, we have Logan King, Theo Page, Casey Thompson, Xander Edwards, Penny Stacy, Brooklyn Walters, and Brooklyn Overgard McCool, sponsored by Brian Harmon. These are students who were in the Region Arts Award Show. The KYAEA Northern Region Art Award Show was displayed at NKU's Atrium Gallery. Over 200 artworks representing 19 different schools entered the show. These camel artists all placed at this regional show. Congratulations to all of them. Their talents are exceptional. <laughs> all right, and we have two groups coming up from Klein Elementary. We'll do the academic team first. We have Grant Kukla, Keelan O'Leary, Sam Sedmark, Medwin Chuche, Callie Watson, Caroline LaJoy, Ross Myers, Willie Flora, Samantha Hargett and Lydia McPherson, coached by Amity Kukla. Klein's academic team competed in the Governor's Cup District Competition where they earned the title of District Champions. They moved to the Governor's Cup Regional Competition where they placed third overall. Every member contributed to this success, either on the quick recall team or by taking written assessments. Most notably, this team earned the Catherine Hume Sportsmanship Award at both events. Congratulations to this amazing group of young role models. <laughs> All right, and our last group is from Klein. We have the Beta Club. I think we have some of the same people. <laughs> we have Lily Clark, Lainey Rich, Willie Flora, Medwin Chuche, Grant Kukla, Sam Sedmark, Eleanor Toy, Samantha Hargett and Savannah Ranshaw, sponsored by Amity Kukla and Kat LaJoy. Klein's Beta members competed at the Beta State Convention in January. Beta emphasizes four pillars, academic achievement, character, leadership, and service. Students across the nation have the opportunity to compete in academics, visual and performing arts, and STEM. These Klein students won at the state level and now have the option to attend the National Convention in Savannah, Georgia later this summer. Congratulations to these talented young leaders. Thank you.
lost it. Okay, the next item on our agenda is our audience comments, and there are uh, no speakers signed up for tonight's meeting. Uh, next, we have our superintendent comments, Dr. Wilson. So I wanted to take this opportunity because our legislative session has um, come to a, not a screeching halt, but has come closely to the end, and I wanted to um, make sure that come every month, making sure that we have um, informed citizens. So I wanted to share some information with the legislative session about um, basically our education, um, education this session, um, and this is my opinion, was one of the friendliest we have seen towards education in a while. We did, we did see increased um, SRO funding, which will allow us to recoup some of the expenses we are already expending in our district for our SRO, SROs. Um, we also saw, saw increased funding for the already incurred transportation expenses. So we saw increases in the reimbursement of what we um, have already expensed. We saw increased funding for our career and technical education programming. And we did with our SEEK base, um, we did see that the SEEK base was increased. What that means for Campbell County, there are different figures out there, but right now we have preliminary um, projections based on that SEEK base increasing, and that net increase is estimated right now at around $200,000. So I want to point that out, that while we did have a very education-friendly budget um, in our district, a 1.5% step increase um, for our, all of our employees' increase in their um, salary cost the district around $500,000. So um, many have been talking about, we want to see our staff, um, our vision pillar number one is to recruit and retain the highest quality staff, and part of that does come with competitive wages. So I want to be very clear in pointing that out, that the SEEK base that we are seeing um, running preliminary numbers that is increasing our district seek formula, our seek distribution by $200,000. So this did fall significantly short of, um, this is my personal opinion, of my expectations of where we could get our, our employees um, competitively, it can, could get competitive wages through that funding distribution. So again, I'm not saying where we're at, we are working hard, this board is working very hard, we will have a working session where we will be discussing that, and um, this board is working very hard to support our vision pillar one and to keep our salaries competitive. So just wanted to give that update and keep everyone informed. If, again, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, and if I can't answer them, I will find someone that can answer those questions. And that Thank concludes you. my comments. <laughs> board member comments? Um, yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, I'm just gonna take a few minutes of everybody's time real quick. Um, I'm going to read what I wrote, actually, so it makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, as most of you know, my name is Kaylin Campbell. I was elected to the Campbell County School Board in November of 2022. Since being on the board, I've been a part of so much for the school system. We have been able to make so many positive steps in such a small amount of time. We have been able to give raises to all of our employees. We have started to build the new Grand Slick Elementary, 
work on the middle school and have successfully funded and helped with many programs in the schools. There have been a few, there are just a few of the great things that I've been blessed to be a part of. As most of you know, I do have a background of being in the classroom. A little over two months ago, I accepted a job in the classroom at the regional schools program. Sorry to Officer Matt Myers of the Campbell County Police Department over there, who now has to see me every day. Um, the school is there for many reasons, but the vision is to provide resources for successful transition in school, community and society, support for overcoming barriers and obstacles in learning and life, and partnership that enhances success in all areas, including social, educational, vocational, and culture. We looked into it and were told there were no conflicts of interest, but after reaching out to the Attorney General, it seems to be a conflict of interest. These kids need positive influence and consistency more than most. So today I'm making the decision to step down from the Board of Education. I would like to thank everyone in the district who, for all their hard work that they put into the schools every single day. I would also like to thank the community for believing me and hopefully you all understand, especially with a teacher shortage, I need to be back in the classroom where I can help even more. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone on the board for sharing this experience with me and personally would like to thank Dr. Wilson for everything you're doing for the school system and making it so much better. I will still be around volunteering and helping in any way I can, but I do want to thank everyone for this amazing opportunity. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. <laughs> So I, I will say, you know, from my perspective as board chair, it's, it's um, been enjoyable getting to know you and have you be a part of our board. And certainly you've worked very hard on behalf of Campbell County Schools and we greatly appreciate that. And um, you have a clear commitment to the student success um, through both your service on the board and your work as a, as a teacher in the classroom. And we wish you a great success as you, you move forward. Thank you. Get out. But thank you. For sure. Thank you. For sure. Okay, well, there's no point in me being here, so I'm going to head out. <laughs> <laughs> thank okay, you for coming you tonight. Before you go, Kaylin, I want to thank you also. Of course. Of course. For Are there board member comments on other topics? <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to point out uh, what Superintendent Wilson talked about with the uh, funding uh, that we did get. Uh, one of the things I, th I think needs to be highlighted is the fact that. Um, the SRO and, and some of the other school safety funds have been increased. Our, our district, our board has for several years been going above and beyond what was required. And because, it, I mean, it's for the safety of the kids and staff. Uh, and so um, that, that's something that it's nice to see that the state is beginning to recognize that and we're going to get some money back on, on some of what we've spent previously. Uh, it's, it's not wrong to spend when it's the right thing. Thank you. I'd just like to offer uh, congrats again to all the <coughs> students and parents and sponsors who came out tonight with the, uh, the basketball teams and the academic teams. It's always very enjoyable to see. Um, we have a very successful district and it's great to see the people actually show. Um, it means a lot to us and I hope it means a lot to the community too. Um, I did also want to offer um, my condolences to Bill and Liz Delaney on the passing of their son Brady Delaney who is a 2022 graduate of Campbell County High School on April 2nd. Um, I, I cannot claim to have known him personally uh, but it is clear from the outpouring of affection and the sheer number of people who attended his visitation last week that he touched a great many lives during his time. Uh, Bill and Liz, uh, who I do know Bill and Liz personally, uh, my, my heart aches for your loss. Um, I, his time on earth was short, but hopefully his memory will bring you comfort and strength in the days ahead. That's all I have. Ms. Schultz. All right, well, we uh, th certainly recognized a number of students, and then was it just last week that we did the district all-stars <laughs> in, in the school buildings? And we um, recognized 10 uh, staff members. I think we only did nine in person because one was busy dealing with a, uh, an outage of electric at one of the schools, so he was not uh, readily accessible, but um, showing <coughs> why he was an all-star to be out and about dealing with a crisis when we needed his work the most. 
So congratulations to them as well. And um, next Tuesday night, next Tuesday night, yes, is the um, Excellence in Education Dinner. I have to think ahead. Um, so we'll have a chance to recognize some others from our school district who we know are, are being honored at that event. So lots of great things always happening at Campbell County. The next thing on our agenda are as the uh, personnel actions and the board accepts those as submitted. Then our written communications and reports, which include the site-based minutes, the family uh, resource and youth services center reports, the homeless services report, the pupil personnel report, public relations report, the report of donations, school-related field trip notifications for athletics and transportation, the district non-SBDM staffing, the district technology plan, and the full school report from Klein Elementary, and finally, the results of the sale of surplus items. Now we move to our action agenda. The first item on our action agenda is uh, BG 24-150 Campbell Ridge Paving Improvements Award the Bid and Revised BG 1. Okay, you have before you, um, as Ms. Fender mentioned, um, a, we had an original BG 1 for this at 275,682 out of our building fund. But with assistance um, from Robert Emmett Hayes, who's here this evening, and associates, the district advertised and received bids for paving improvements at Campbell Ridge Elementary School. There were three bids that were received on Tuesday, March 6th, which included a base bid with three alternate options. We do do that. We oftentimes bid out separate um, alternates to get the best pricing. We have before us um, alternate one, which is a scratch course at all overlay areas, alternate two, which is the seal coating for the walking trail, and alternate three, which includes fiber reinforcement for all new asphalt. So um, the three alternates plus the <coughs> construction contingency um, and the construction costs, the architect and engineering fees, and the printed material comes to a total of 327,774 that would be taken from our building fund. So the best and lowest bid was submitted by Regular Blacktop and that all the information the board has received ahead of time before you. We have used Regular Blacktop before and been uh, satisfied with their work, found it to be of good quality. I'm looking at Mr. Hayes who's giving me a head nod. <laughs> yes. so for those of you who are wondering like why I'm, <laughs> yeah. With no questions, I would recommend um, that the board awards the bid, including alternates one through three to regular blacktop and approve the revised BG1 for BG24-150 Campbell Ridge Elementary School paving improvements as presented. Is there a motion from the board? <laughs> I'll move we approve the BG24-150 <laughs> Campbell Ridge paving improvements. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Mason? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Ms. Schultz? Yes. And Ms. Fender is yes. Our next item is a BG 22-294 for Campbell County Middle School renovations, change order number eight. Okay, as you mentioned, we are on change order number eight, um, but we do have a remaining contingency balance of $337,019.53. So while this is a change order of $23,811.90, it is for um, this change order eight does include East Kentucky Masonry LLC 2-5 and Hudson Piping Incorporated 12-4. Information and conditions have been verified by Cadell Construction, who's here this evening, over there, um, our architects and our engineers. Um, there's $7,616.90 of this change order is, to East, or is for East Kentucky Masonry. LLC 2-5, and that is for the time, labor, and material for for alternation, for alter, it doesn't alteration. read alterations <laughs> to the brickwork that was required to allow additional steel plate installation behind the parapet wall, and I got parapet correct. <laughs> um, we were working on that in the rain over um, spring break. The other $16,195 is for Hudson Piping Incorporated 12-4, and that's for the extended boiler warranty and uh, the additional time, labor, and material for RR182, and that is a location and additional valves. 
Are there any questions, comments? Can we do all we say? That's why we have a contingency. <laughs> yeah, and it's still very strong at three hundred thirty-seven thousand nineteen dollars. That's even though we've had eight of them with a major renovation project. It's for a building of that age and size. An old building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And those things are expensive. So with no questions, I would recommend approval of the change order number eight, which includes East Kentucky Masonry LLC 2-5 and Hudson Piping Incorporated 12-4 4BG number 22-294 Campbell County Middle School renovations as presented. Is there a motion from the board? I'll move we approve BG 22-294 CCMS renovations change order number eight. Is there a second? No second. Mr. Mason? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Ms. Schultz? Yes. And Ms. Fender is yes. The third item on our action agenda is the Grand Communities LLC pilot agreement. Okay, so we have a proposal here to for the board to enter into an agreement in lieu of taxes with Grand Communities LLC. Um, and I will do some explanation here because oftentimes it's um, difficult to understand what a, it's called a pilot, um, what a payment in lieu of taxes um, is. So hopefully this is a win-win situation for our community. This Grand Communities LLC is in the process of acquiring property in Southgate and in Wilder. Grand Communities LLC is pursuing the funding of this development in coordination with the city using industrial reven revenue bonds, which are called IRBs. Um, by doing so, the development is eligible to put their future tax savings forward to the improvement costs of the overall property. As is typical in this type of arrangement, taxing districts recognizing the importance of economic development in our area and the risk that is taken by the developer, we pledge, they pledge a certain amount of their tax revenue towards the project. Grand Communities LLC has communicated with Campbell County Schools asking for a pledge of future taxes. Campbell Campbell County can pledge the taxes to the developer that would otherwise be equalized by the state via the SEEK program. What the goal there is, is to keep our money in Northern Kentucky. This pledge will provide the school district with a payment in lieu of taxes, P-I-L-O-T, to provide revenue to the district based on the assessed value of the developed property. In this particular agreement, for 30 years, Campbell County would agree to pledge 40% of the projected tax revenue that would otherwise be collected based on the PVA assessment at the applicable tax rate in return for a pilot payment equal to 60% of the real property tax revenue that is resulting from the same PVA assessment and the applicable tax rate. For the remaining 10 years, the pilot payment will be equal to 100% of the real property tax revenue at the applicable tax rate. This agreement will also save the district from paying the current 1.5% tax collection rate. The pilot will be, will be paid over the course of the IRB up to 40 years in total. Ultimately, because of the seat calculations, the district is not losing any real revenue and will now receive additional revenues based on the improved status of the property estimated to be a $264 million development. The expected overall impact is estimated at an additional $15 million in revenue over the next 40 years. Without these tax arrangements, it would be difficult for the developer to complete this project, and as a community, we want to see development, we want to be able to support that development um, and I will commend, we do have um, Greg Fisher in the back of the room, Jim Parsons, who worked with us, and um, our finance director did an excellent job of trying to make sure that Campbell County Schools is winning in this situation and that Grand Communities also is winning in this, in this situation. So um, we're here to entertain any questions that you might have. Any questions or comments? Um, excellent job on everyone in, in getting this negotiated. Thank you. Including you, Dr. Wilson. You can thank yourself. <laughs> I was a tough negotiator. <laughs> I was proud of myself. No, I, I, I am very pleased with this. I do, I do think that we did not stop until we could get to a number that would benefit Campbell County students. And I think we've also come to an agreement where we can also benefit 
the, the developers, developers as well. So. Your recommendation? So with that, I would recommend approval of the agreement in lieu of taxes with Grand Communities LLC as presented. Is there a motion from the board? I'll move we approve the Grand <coughs> Communities LLC pilot agreement. Is there a second? I'll second. Ms. Schultz? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Mason? Yes. Ms. Fenders? Yes. The next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. This includes our minutes, our addendum bills, our regular bills, our treasurer's report, leave of absence requests, the SFCC second offer of assistance for technology for 2023-24, award reject open invitation to bid for go goods and services, surplus of equipment, shortened school week and day for a student with IEP, 2024-25 pay date schedule, the Eastern Kentucky University MOA addendum for communication sciences and disorders program, and board member resignation acceptance. And we do want to mention that with item 12, the board member resignation acceptance, that does create a board vacancy. Are there any questions about any of these items or concerns? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I'll move we accept the uh, consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Mason? Yes. Ms. Schultz? Yes. And Ms. Fender is yes. Final item on our agenda is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll move we adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.